Hello everyone, in this video I'm gonna go over Rawls law. To understand Rawls law, I'm gonna go over one more concept. We need to know this concept and it's called vapor pressure. So let's say we have two liquids. I'm gonna name this one as LA, liquid A, and this one as B, L, B, uh, liquid B. I'm gonna talk about one and same will apply to the second one. So when this liquid is allowed to evaporate in this closed container, a part of this liquid evaporate and fills the available space. So this liquid is evaporating and changing into vapors over here. And these vapors will get collected in the vapor state above the surface of liquid because they can't leave out. This is a closed container. Due to the vaporization, liquid changes into vapor and the level of the liquid will decrease here. So it will go down because it is changing into the vapors. So as the evaporation proceeds, the number of gaseous molecules in the vapor phase also increases. And these molecules move randomly in this tight space. And during their random motion, some of them will strike the surface of the liquid and they will condense. And the process of condensation acts in opposite direction. This is the process of condensation. They are going back into a liquid state. And at the same time, they are also uh, evaporating and changing into vapors. So both evaporation and condensation processes go on simultaneously. So ultimately, a stage is reached when the rate of evaporation becomes equal to the rate of condensation. And there will be um, equilibrium established between liquid and vapor phases. So the vapor, or we can say the pressure exerted by vapors, the pressure exerted by these vapors at the equilibrium is called vapor pressure and we donate it by P naught A and here it will be in this liquid B it will be P naught B. So the pressure exerted by vapors above the liquid surface in equilibrium with the liquid at a given temperature is called vapor pressure. And vapor pressure depends on the nature of a liquid, means it will change if we change the liquid. And it also depends on the temperature, so it, it can go up and down with change in temperature. So we're gonna use this concept to understand Rawls law. Now, Rawls law states that for a solution of volatile liquids, before that, let's say in this closed container, we mix these two liquid to make a binary solution, LA and LB. And now these uh, components in this solution will start evaporating in this direction and their vapors will be in this open space or the available space in the container and some of them will strike the surface and get condensed and there will be a process of condensation and when there is equilibrium between condensation and evaporation at that time they will start uh, the pressure exerted by these vapors of two liquid uh, two different components we call it partial vapor pressure partial vapor pressure. We call it partial because they both trying to exert the pressure. If this is exerting pressure, the other one, the comp uh, other components of vapors 
will also exert pressure on the surface of a liquid. So that's why we call it partial vapor pressure. Now Raoul Salat states that for a solution of volatile liquids, the partial vapor pressure, I'm going to say Pa here and Pb for the second liquid, the partial vapor pressure of each component in the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction. So if x is the mole fraction and x b is the mole fraction of component B, so according to Rolf's law, the partial pressure P A is proportional to x A. Or it can be written as P A is equal to P naught A x A. And P naught A is the vapor pressure of pure component A, as in this case over here. But we have two components, that's why we call it partial pressure. And for component B, it will be proportional to the mole fraction of that component B. And it can be written as PB is equal to P naught B times xb and p naught b is the vapor pressure of pure component b like in this case over here now according to dalton's law of partial pressure the total pressure p i'm going to name it pt is equal to the sum of partial pressure of the components of the solution. So Pt is equal to Pa plus Pb. And we can rewrite them in terms of partial, in terms of the vapor pressure. So P naught A x A plus P naught B x B. And we also know that the, the sum of the mole fraction of a solution is equal to 1. In our case, we have a binary solution because we got two components. So xA plus xB is equal to 1. Or we can write xA is equal to 1 minus xB. So I'm going to replace this xA over here with 1 minus xB. So that will be re rewritten as P naught A into 1 minus XB plus P naught B XB and when we solve it or rewrite it, it can be written as P naught A plus P naught B minus P naught A times xb so this this equation if we look at it, it looks like a linear equation like um, y is equal to mx plus b or a c that's a b see this is this p not b part is m the slope and xb is this part over here so this equation tells us that the total vapor pressure, the total vapor pressure over the solution can be related to the mole fraction of any one component. So if, if we replace, if we replace um, xb is equal to here, xb is equal to 1 minus xa, then this will be xa here. The mole fraction of component A. The total vapor pressure over the solution can be related to the mole fraction of any component. It can be XB or it can be XA. And the total vapor pressure of the solution varies linearly with the mole fraction of component B in this case. Because P naught A and P naught B are constant. So this will change if xb change. So it changes linearly with xb. 
So depending on the vapor pressure of pure components A and B, the total vapor pressure, the total vapor pressure over the solution decreases or increases with the increase of the mole fraction of component A. So if this XA changes or we can say XB is equal to 1 minus XA. So if XA changes, the XB will change and that will change the total pressure here. So if XA increases, the XB decreases and that will decrease the total pressure. If XA decreases, that will increase XB and that will increase total pressure here. So now look, let's look at this graph over here. So in the beginning, let's say we have mole fraction of component A is equal to 1 and mole fraction of component B is equal to 0. That means there is only the pressure due to the component A, which is P naught A, which is the vapor pressure of component A. And the, the pressure due to component B is 0 because there is the mole fraction B is 0 because it is directly proportional to the mole fraction. So in this case, we have a pressure just due to component A. So as we go along and we start increasing the mole fraction of component B and we decrease the mole fraction of component A, in this direction, um, the pressure, the vapor pressure of the component A will go down but the pressure due to component B will go up and there will be P naught B. And if we join this line from P naught A to P naught B, that will represent the total vapor pressure of the solution. So along this line, let's say I'm going to say this is line 1. Along line 1, the pressure, the vapor pressure of B is increasing. But the vapor pressure along this line 2, the vapor pressure of component 1 is going down. And P naught A to P naught B represent the total vapor pressure of the solution. So that will be uh, P A plus P V. So this P T is equal to P A plus P B. So this was Rawls law in nutshell. I'll, I'll be making a video on a couple of problems on Rawls law in the coming video. So please uh, do share, subscribe and like the video that motivate me to make more videos. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye.